everyone, welcome back to Four Quarter Crafts. I'm Melissa and in today's video I'm sharing with you four dollar store DIYs. This is a follow-up to my Tuesday Dollar Tree haul video. So let's begin with the first project. I'm starting with four of these frames from Dollar Tree. Um, almost everything in this video is from Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove the backing and the glass. Next, I am going to basically break these apart. They do come apart pretty easily, but it breaks apart into four pieces. I'm really going to focus on those three pieces there with each frame. So here's once I have them all apart. Next, I'm going to pull off the little tabs that were on the back just so that they lay flat. And once that was done, I just smoothed all of the edges with my hand sander. And now I am basically going to put my frames back together. I'm starting with that smaller top piece of the frame and I'm just matching up the angles with the sides of the frame. So I'm making one large frame out of four little frames basically. So I'm going to hot glue those pieces together and now here is my longer side of my frame and I'm going to do that with the rest of my pieces. And now I'm just going to construct my bigger frame back together with some hot glue just making sure to get the edges nice and straight. And did that to all four sides of my frame. And then once that was done, I took some of these adorable canvas prints from Dollar Tree as well. And I am going to glue these into a section of four. So I'm putting hot glue on the side of one and then I'm putting the opposite frame in the opposite corner and then gluing those. And then I'm gonna glue those pieces together. So I'm making a, a larger piece of wall art from these mini canvases. Next, I'm gonna take this uh, burlap ribbon and I'm going to measure out how much from the top to the bottom and side to side and then hot glue those down. That's just going to cover the creases of my uh, frame there. Smooth it out. Do the same thing all the way across. Put some hot glue and then smooth out the other piece. This just makes it look a little more finished. And now I'm going to take this kind of jagged edged uh, burlap ribbon and I'm going to uh, measure out the length of the bottom and the sides. So I'm going to cut four of those total. I'm then going to add hot glue and just place that ribbon down. And this is going to go on all the sides of my canvas picture here. And now it's once that was done, I took my frame and put dots of hot glue into each corner and set the frame down right on top. Um, the frame is just a teeny tiny bit smaller, so that's why the ribbon is on the sides. Uh, but now we're going to focus on the center portion. So I'm taking these bows, I'm going to cut them apart. And what I loved about these was um, just the coloring and kind of the really beautiful texture of it. So since these are curled, I'm really going to make them as straight as I can by um, the opposite of curling ribbon. So I'm just um, going over them to make them straight on the pink side. Now I'm going to take some poster board and just a lid. I'm going to trace out, I believe I do six circles. And then um, once I have all of my circles traced, I'm going to cut those out. And what I am going to be doing here is making some paper flowers out of this um, ribbon and post board. So I'm going to cut out my circles. Here's what they look like all cut out. Next, I'm going to take my extra strength glue stick and go about halfway down and start gluing down my ribbon. So I'm just going to put a piece down, cut it, continue that piece, and then cut it continue that piece and cut it and then work my way all the way down and uh, not really overlapping it just putting it as close as possible so once I have it all the way down I'm going to turn it over and then cut out around the circle 
and I will be doing the back side of this as well, uh, but just to not lose the shape of the circle, I am cutting in between each layer. So here I did the back, and then I'm gonna once again trace, or I'm sorry, cut around that circle. So once I have both sides done, I'm gonna continue to do that with the rest of my uh, circles. And I did four in the pink. You'll see what I do with the other two um, in just a second. So the, f the other two I decided I wanted to try a couple of the faux leather ribbon on making these uh, flowers. So I'm just doing the same thing, uh, measuring it out across the circle, cutting it across the circle, cutting it, adding more glue, and then finishing all the way down. Once again, I'm gonna turn it over and cut out the circle and then finish the back side as well. So I did that to both of those circles. So now I'm making the flowers. You're gonna go in at, at an angle and you're gonna start basically going thin to thicker. You're gonna do a, a squirrely line. So once you get your uh, line all cut, if you start at the first point where you began your cut, you're just gonna roll it and you're just gonna hold, uh, what I find the best is to hold your thumb at the, what will be the bottom of the rose and then just roll it from there. And then once you have that all the way down to the bottom, I'm gonna add some hot glue on that bottom portion and then secure it. And then any places that seem to kind of pop up, I just put little dots of glue inside and now I have my paper rose and I have it in the color that I want. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the same thing to the other four roses and then I just did the same thing to the ones that I did with the faux leather. I made those into some roses as well, so I did that to both of those. And here's what those look like once that's done. And then I decided, um, I was kind of playing around and seeing what kind of look I wanted. I was originally thinking of bouquet, but then it seemed a bit too much, so I decided on just three of these roses. And then I took a couple of flowers from a bouquet and then some feathers from the stream catcher. I'm just trimming down the feathers here and then gluing the three, I believe, flowers down in the shape that I will be gluing my roses. So the Dreamcatcher feathers had beads on them. I just removed the beads and then trimmed it down and then placed it right underneath the flower petal and I angled it kind of pointing down on both sides. Next I'm adding hot glue to the bottom of my paper flowers and I'm placing them right where I had kind of planned out and it leaves the flower petals kind of poking through the side. And here is how the finished project turned out. For this next project, I'm starting out with two of these wood hanging decor plaques from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut the hanging twine portions off. And then I'm going to take some of the spackling just to fill in the holes. Um, I actually did not need to do this, um, but um, if you want to, you can. But I ended up putting something over this, but just kind of an extra step if you wanted to fill the holes. So once that was done, I just sanded off the extra spackle and now I'm going to use my white Waverly chalk paint and I am going to paint the top and the sides of these with a nice thick coat of paint. And I love these. I love that they're so thick. They're just such a nice quality. So I did two of those. And now remember those pieces from my last project that had the uh, kind of metal frames there from the bottom portions of my frames. I decided to unscrew those and then I am gluing the pieces together almost in like this kind of triangle pointy shape. So I am hot gluing two of those. I'm sanding the sides once again. And then once that was done I took some of that faux leather ribbon and I'm just measuring out uh, enough to wrap around where those holes are. So I did two for each, adding my extra strength glue stick again, 
and just placing that right over the holes and then I go ahead and wrap it around, add more glue, and just fold those sides up. And what I am uh, doing here is kind of building out the look of like a, a keyhole. So you'll see um, what I'm making here in just a sec. So to cover that line in the middle, I put another piece of the ribbon. I just measured out exactly how much I would need and then glued that down to the middle to cover those middle lines. And now you see how the sides, one's a little bit thicker than the other because that was for putting in like your label. If you overlap them, then you get the sides equal on, on both, an equal amount of thickness. So I'm just doubling those up and then screwing them back down. And then I just took a black sharpie and I'm just drawing a circle with a kind of little narrow line to make my keyholes. I'm then going to take some hot glue and put that along the back and place that right into the center of my wood plaques there that I painted. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue that plaque down onto the larger plaque there. It's the unfinished wood. And that's going to be uh, basically like my background for these uh, keyholes there. And then I took this uh, burlap ribbon. This one I really liked. It had like the um, kind of rectangular pattern, but I'm cutting out how much I will need to put a strip of that onto the top of each of these. So I'm going to hot glue where the burlap is, not to burn my fingers through the holes, <laughs> and then gently place that down, turn it over, add more glue. And then I have that done. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side as well. Next I'm going to cut off some more of those brown feathers from my dream catchers and I'm going to place them to where I have them kind of angling down again and then add glue in the middle and before the glue, glue dries I'm just going to stick the paper rose right in the center. So I made another paper rose and added that there. Now I'm going to take these two glass bottles and I am really going to be using just the bottle tops. So I am going to measure out with my uh, leather ribbon again how much will I need to cover the kind of cork part there. And then I'm going to trim it just a smidge so it uh, is the right size to wrap all the way around. And then I'm going to add some hot glue and then wrap that around. And once that was done, I just put glue on the bottom and stuck it right at the top of my doorknob or door lock. <laughs> it's a doorknob. <laughs> um, so I thought this would be a really cute like jewelry hanger or, um, you know, even like a scarf hanger or something like that. But I uh, took some more of that ribbon and adding hot glue to one side and then crossing it over to make the little hangers for them. So I did that to both. And then I'm just going to glue that to the back so I can hang up my little doorknobs. And here is how the project turned out. For this next project, I'm starting out with this garden flag and some wooden stems. I'm going to remove the flag and I want these wood stems to be the base of what I'm making. So I'm just kind of figuring out how I want to build them up. So I'm starting with the biggest pieces first and I'm going to glue those down. I'm going to add some glue to the base of my uh, flag there and then go ahead and press those against the wood stems. I'm going to add more hot glue and then some more of the bigger wood stems all the way around. And then on the sides I put two kind of smaller ones and then I'm going to uh, kind of fill in those empty spaces with hot glue. I'm going to be building up so you won't see the glue, it's just going to add that extra security. And then I'm going to start placing the smaller wood stems um, basically around the base and then kind of fitting them in between um, the empty spaces there and then all around on the back as well just giving it a really nice secure fit there. 
And then uh, once that was done all the way around, I decided to add those faux leather roses that I made earlier. And I'm putting those in the little open corners of my wood stems. And then I made two more of the paper roses and I'm placing those onto each side. And now I have the base done. And now I want to work on the kind of hanging, uh, kind of little tapestry, desktop tapestry, I guess. <laughs> so I'm taking some of this nautical rope and I'm measuring out how much I'll need from the top to the bottom. And then I'm going to double it because of the way I'm going to wrap this. So I am going to uh, cut three of these total. And then I'm going to unravel them, and each of these is made of three. So I will have six pieces total that I'm going to be working with here. So now I'm going to figure out the center and then loop it through. I'm just going to do like a loop knot. So I'm just wrapping it over and then tucking the other two pieces in just like that and then tightening it. And that's just going to give me that, like, that little loop knot there at the top. And then I'm just going to continue doing that with all the rest of my pieces. Here's what all six of them look like. And then I'm going to take a fine toothed comb and just start brushing from the bottom and then kind of work my way up in sections. I'm um, working my ways kind of in threes. So here's what it looks like once it's brushed. I'm going to do that to the other three as well. I'm then going to lay it down and then cut a straight edge, trim any pieces that may still be a little longer and then it's perfect for hanging. this last project I'm starting with two of these wreath rings and then just one of the orb wreath rings. So we're going to first start with the two smaller ones. I'm going to use some decorative nautical rope and I'm going to start by unraveling that. Once again it unravels into three pieces and I'm going to unravel the whole thing and then grab the three ends and tie a knot and then I'm going to start braiding the three pieces. I'm going to braid it all the way down once I get to the bottom, I'm going to tie another knot and I will be using two total for this uh, each wreath, so four total, but two for each of the smaller wreaths. I'm then going to add some hot glue and then start wrapping the braided uh, rope there. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap it and just continue going um, as far as I can go basically. And then I'm going to trim down the edges, add some more hot glue, and then kind of lay it down flat. This is the back of the wreath, so it will lay flat. And then I'm going to continue where I left off, add more hot glue with my second braided rope. And start wrapping that around. It's just going to cover the rope that's already glued in the back there. And I'm going to continue wrapping. And then when I get to the bottom, I am going to push as much as I can to get those pieces as close as possible and then just cut off any remaining parts and then glue down the edges. And then push a little bit more and this piece that is empty there is where I'm going to start building up with my yarn. So I did that to both of these smaller wreaths here. And now I'm going to be using one color for each wreath of the pink and the tan. So I'm going to start wrapping, this is just a white piece of board from Dollar Tree, just the whiteboard. I'm going to wrap around it 20 times and then cut it. I'm then going to cut the portion that I wrapped and then find the center and do the same thing with the looping. So I'm going to go up and around and then pull it through, slide it over and then tighten it. And then the next part that I'm going to be doing is with these doilies. So you get two in a pack and just as I did with the paper roses, I'm going to cut in a spiral. So I'm going to go in at an angle and I'm just going to turn it as I go cutting that spiral shape. 
I can continue doing that all the way till I get to the very middle and then just trim it with an angle there and basically what this is doing is giving me um, that kind of wavy uh, kind of pattern so it doesn't lay flat it has that really nice wave to it so I'm gonna loop that through pull my ends through and then slide it over and tighten and then I'm just gonna repeat the same pattern with the pink yarn so I'm gonna do tan the white lace pink yarn tan tan <laughs> tan pink white lace and then tan again so that was the pattern I did and then I'm just going to group the ends together and cut that so I did that to both of the smaller wreaths so now the bigger wreath in the middle I am using this uh, white feather boa I'm gonna glue the end of it to the wreath and then start wrapping it glue the other end and then I'm going to do the same thing with my yarn and the white lace only this time this was the pattern I did for this one so I did uh, the cream the pink the lace the cream the pink the lace the cream the pink the lace the cream <laughs> And now I'm going to take my dream catchers left over from when I cut the feathers and I'm going to hot glue those two on each side and then hot glue one in the middle. I'm then going to take some white yarn and just loop that through the top and then tie it for added strength there. And then I was playing around with some more florals and I thought that I would fill in the empty space in between the dream catchers with some florals so I'm just gluing those in making sure that these stems are going underneath the wreath so they're glued on the bottom side. And then once that uh, wreath was done, I'm just hot gluing it to both of my smaller ones and here's how it turned out. So I hope that you enjoyed today's crafts. Please give this video a thumbs up before you go. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.